worldwide, we have 12 million people with sickle cell. Mm. In Ghana, though, we have 15,000 babies that are born yearly with the sickle cell disease. And this happens because carriers of sickle cell genes don't know. And so we can use the term ignorant about the disease and only find out when their children are diagnosed with a problem. Sickle cell is the most common inherited blood disease in the world and affects people living in countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. Well, if you don't know the Mediterranean Sea, please find a map. It just means that it affects a lot more people who are blacks, but also just those beyond the shores, up north of Africa, getting into Europe, Portugal, Spain, etc., Italy. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge problem. My guest uh, this morning knows everything about the sickle cell disease. I've spoken to him severally, and Professor Emeritus Kweku Ohinim Fimfong is uh, the head of the Sickle Cell Foundation in Ghana, uh, very much instrumental in the establishment of a center at the Comfort Anoche Teaching Hospital. He's wearing their cloth today, thankfully, and so easily identifiable. Thanks for joining me once again. Thank you very much. And um, I saw him, and then I said, oh, that's him. Um, he lives in the United States, though. He keeps coming to Ghana because he's from Ghana, but also because you love what you do. Yes. Um, how many times have you already traveled to Ghana this year? Well, this year, this <laughs> is my third visit. This right. Year. Okay. The next time, give me an invitation. Let me travel alongside you. Very good. All right. be, but be uh, you're here because you, you have a love to make sure that um, you get the diagnosis right and you get the treatment. I remember one time I spoke mm -hmm. to you in the past, in the time past, and you said, um, the hospitals in America got to notice that in the African com African American community, early part of uh, the times that they were diagnosing the mm -hmm. disease, and so they also found a way to deal with it. And you thought that your home state or in Africa, you needed to do something about Absolutely. the problem, and now you have become uh, an expert in the subject. How have we improved? since we started making sure that we were paying close attention to improving the situation of sickle cell? Well, worldwide, um, we know the disease a lot better than we did in the past. Um, in the United States, I would say 45, 50 years ago, it was said that um, half the children born with sickle cell disease would be um, dead by 20 years of age. Uh, right now in the United States, in France, in Brazil, in UK, uh, sickle cell children live to past 20 years at a rate of about 98%. So that we are saving a lot more lives. It doesn't mean that the disease is any milder, but at least they're not dying early as they used to in the first three years of life. We have one medication now, it's called hydroxyurea, which was licensed in the United States to treat sickle cell disease uh, around 1995, which has really improved the lives of many people with sickle cell disease. The most important intervention that we do for sickle cell disease is to make the diagnosis early in the first few weeks of life, usually at birth, so that we can start preventive treatment from two months of age. That is what has saved the lives of most children. In Africa, unfortunately, because we don't have that newborn screening, the estimate is still that we lose about 50 to 90% of children with sickle cell disease by five years of age. And that is really unacceptable. So much progress has been made around this newborn screening and the treatment that these children take. It's just ordinary penicillin twice daily, saves their lives. And the fact that most countries in Sub-Saharan Africa are not able to do newborn screening uh, for sickle cell is a major problem. Now, the newborns, yes. how do we do the detections? Yeah. It's actually quite simple. There's a blood test, and we get the blood by a little prick of the heel. We just take a few drops the of, heel of, who? of the baby. Yes. So the baby at birth, or a few days after birth, um, we train nurses to do this little heel prick, and a few drops of blood are put on a special filter paper. Um, attached to a form that has information about the family. It gets sent to a lab and within a day or two after it reaches the lab, they elute the blood from the filter paper and analyze it and we can diagnose sickle cell disease very easily. Our lab here at Noguchi uh, Memorial Institute for Medical Research has tested now close to 500,000 babies with sickle cell disease in Ghana. So the work itself is relatively easy. 
The harder part sometimes is tracking the family down so that we can get the baby into treatment. Um, and now that people have mobile phones, that also is becoming a lot easier to do. And when the children are registered in clinic, their treatment, their management involves educating the parents to know that this particular child is different from other children. If this child has fever, you don't stay at home, you have to come to the hospital because the infections that kill them can kill them in a matter of hours. They should take their penicillin twice daily. We give them folic acid also to help them make blood. So the management is not expensive. It doesn't require any super machines or anything. And we are able to save many lives. In Kumasi, in our newborn screening program that we, we are doing, uh, we about 4.5% of the children are lost in the first five years. That compared to the 50 to 90% um, that is estimated for Sub-Saharan Africa. It just shows us what we are able to do right here in Ghana. Uh, we'll come to the center and your efforts so far, but mm -hmm. especially in the tropics when we have a lot more of malaria and other those kind of environmental infections yes. that pe people suffer. How does it make it harder for? A sickle cell disease in Africa is unique um, in just one aspect, and as you mentioned, it is malaria. Malaria makes sickle cell disease a little different in Africa than it is in places where they don't have malaria. But we used to think that malaria was the major cause of death in these children. And we have found out that, in fact, bacteria infection kills them more than malaria. The same bacteria that kills sickle cell children in, in Brazil, in the UK, in the US, the same germs cause more deaths in young children with sickle cell disease in Africa than it was believed. You know, as it is in Ghana, if your temperature goes up, fever, Fever is, almost means malaria here. Somebody says have fever means they have malaria. And that unfortunately is not the case. There are many, many, many conditions that can cause your temperature to go up. And for young children with sickle cell disease, when they get the germ that can kill them that fast, the germ is called pneumococcus. That germ can kill them in hours. And so what we do is to train these mothers that if your child looks sick to you, has a high temperature, even those who haven't been to school, we teach them how to use uh, um, digital thermometers so they can see the number. And if the number is above a certain number, they know they're supposed to rush to the hospital. If they get there on time and they get intravenous antibiotics, we save their lives. But the important thing is the fact that they're actually taking protective medicine every day. They also get a special immunization. Now that vaccine against pneumococcus is actually in Ghana. Here is available for all children in the first year of life but we extend it to five years for those with sickle cell disease. So there are a number of things that we can do. I see. Um, I remember the early section of uh, the education on sickle cell was that if people were dating, they wanted to get married, and yes. they needed to go and screen, and uh, that, that's also still... Yes, that is you still... You encourage that as absolutely. well? Absolutely. It's very important. You're not saying that because people there's treatment around, so... No, no, no. I think that um, the education, the counseling, uh, always um, has to go hand in hand with the treatment. We're not at the point where uh, if you're born with sickle cell disease that we can do something that now for the rest of your life you're free of the disease. So, and it's still a major disease. It still shortens the lives of people uh, by about 30 years or so. So it's a serious disease. So we still have to counsel families. We would like people to know their status when they're young, uh, approaching the age where they'll be seriously thinking about partnerships. Um, once you know, and then you can be given some counseling that explains to you what your chances are for having a child with sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. What we don't do from a public health point of view and from an uh, educational point of view is that we don't tell people what you are supposed to do or not do in terms of your choice. People can get married and not have children. People's decisions about having children, they're very personal and for some people they're religious. Uh, so we, we ours is that you understand the risk that you face and you make your own decision. And whatever decision you make, we, as the foundation, as public health workers, we will support you. And mm -hmm. if you have a child with sickle cell disease, we will do the best we can for the child. Well, I know you have a center, uh, and, and, and thankfully you're wearing uh, the cloth of the calf yes. of another teaching hospital. Yes. And that center uh, yes. is the hub in Ghana at least? Uh, it is actually, I would say, the second hub because the first uh, center for treating sickle cell disease was established at Kolibu. This is back in the 1970s. And you know, they have the Clinical Genetics Institute yes. now that takes care of the adults and the pediatric um, block also has a sickle cell clinic. 
So the uh, Kumasi was established because we were introducing this newborn screening project into the country. And the Ministry of Health directed us to go to Kumasi to start it and use that project to start a second sickle cell center in, in Kumasi. So, so, yes, Kumasi so, so, so far, how has it helped to improve the situation? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, we have, as I said, we've tested now close to 500,000 babies. The, we established the clinic in Konfanochi with 10 patients in December 1992. We have more than 10,000 patients now. And about 6,000 of them came as, from the newborn screening. That is the best way to treat sickle cell disease, is to know them from birth and do mostly the preventive uh, things. And you know what they have, the parents understand what they have, so when they're sick, they come to the hospital in time. What we are really absolutely thankful for uh, to GMPC is the fact that with this many patients, we didn't have enough space for our clinic. We have sickle cell clinic at Confanochi Monday through Friday. Um, but if we have a, a enough space, a place to educate the parents, a place to do the lab tests and everything, it will make our work advance much faster. And uh, early this year, you know, GMPC, um, gratefully, uh, is giving us uh, funds they to have? build uh, a center. That, yes, they have committed $4.5 million uh, to build this uh, sickle cell and blood center. Is that a lot? Or it's enough? a lot. The, the original project was actually um, part of an agreement signed between Brazil government and Ghana government to build a, this three-story uh, building that cost about $10 million. And then they divided that work into two phases. The first phase is the $4.5 million. And that's what uh, GMPC has committed itself to do. And it's a great start for us. If we get that center, the patients will get a more comfortable place to be cared for. We can train the doctors and nurses and lab technicians much better and absolutely uh, improve the health of uh, people with sickle cell disease. And hopefully to be a referral center for patients from all over the country uh, who develop more severe complications that need a little more uh, intensive management. Mm. Yeah. But at the end of the day, is that people go out and they meet each other all the time and they want to get married and yes. they have all these difficulties, etc. Yes. Um, what should be the uh, with the various institutions of society, like yes. the church, the the corporations, etc. What should be the foremost um, responsibility for some of those institutions? I think again is education. Uh, I think that I worry a little bit when people try to direct who should marry whom and who cannot marry whom. You know, in well, the, if, in if the, you're going to have sickle cell children, it's a, it's a very turning point. Right, but it's a decision that I think they should make. I mean, in, you know, in our modern history, in the last 150 years or so, um, the one um, organization that tried to determine what the outcome of marriage should be was Nazi Germany that actually wanted to produce a perfect Aryan. race, the okay. Aryan race, and they would actually prevent certain uh, people from marrying. Regarding sickle cell disease in the world right now, one small country, Bahrain, um, which is on the eastern uh, bay from Saudi Arabia, uh, is one country where they have instituted a program where all ch uh, high school students are tested. Now, they have arranged marriage, customary uh, marriage is, is arranged. Some um, elders have to approve every marriage. And so when they make sure that all children are tested, it's not only for sickle cell disease, they test for thalassemia, four, other, uh, uh, four conditions altogether. And what they, the, um, the king did was to issue a decree that says that when the elders are approving marriage, they should take into consideration the results of that testing. Even there, they say that they're not telling anybody not to get married. But since the elders have to approve the marriage and they know the results, then uh, often they prevent it. So Bahrain used to have the same rate of sickle cell disease as Ghana, around 2% of babies born now in Now it's Bahrain. reduced. It's down to 0.4%. Mm. So that's the effect of it. Cuba does it differently. Cuba tests all pregnant women very early in pregnancy to see who carries sickle cell gene. Then they test the, uh, the husband or the mate. And if both of them uh, have S, then they test the pregnancy early uh, in the test we call prenatal diagnosis. And if the baby is affected, they give the parents the choice to terminate this pregnancy and try again. Because if you are both AS, you can have a baby that's AA, AS, or SS. So that's the way Cuba does it. Is it done in Ghana? 
that test is not done in Ghana. Right now, in sub-Saharan Africa... Not even you can bring it to Ghana. We are going to bring it to Ghana. Well, if we I, have the I center, mean, we'll how many be able decades? to do so. Oh, I would think that in the next two, three years. Next there are doctors who know how to obtain the sample from the baby. What we need is a lab that can analyze the sample. Oh. Our colleagues in Lagos, in Nigeria, have already started doing it. Okay, so if I'm in that yes. difficulty, I have to take my pregnant wife to Lagos? To Lagos, yes. We can refer you there. Or if you are able to afford, you can go to U.S., U.K., It will be very expensive. They, well, by Ghanaian standards, yes. But um, prenatal diagnosis now costs somewhere around 10,000 U.S. dollars. And probably much cheaper in Nigeria. It's much cheaper. 10,000. Yes. That's 40,000 Ghana cities in Ghana. Yes. There are many Ghanaians who can Updated afford. with inflation. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have to wrap up our discussions. But sure. is there a way forward for it? Because I know that you come back to Ghana before the close of the year. Is that not it? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Um, right now, I'm going to actually spend more time in Ghana because of the generosity of um, GMPC. The center that we're building, we must build it up to standard. We have to train people to work in there. We have to make sure that we institute our research activities. All of that aimed at improving uh, the health and, and lives of people with sickle cell disease in Ghana. So the future looks bright. And um, the medication that I mentioned, hydroxyurea, is essential that we get it to Ghanaians also. Great work you're doing. And we know that you have to touch base with some other outlets um, on the multimedia platform. And you continue doing the education and also helping us with your expertise. And uh, we're thankful. Do you give scholarship for training, technical assistance? We, uh, we've sent uh, nurses and technicians to uh, Brazil. Uh, recently, we reversed it. We needed more technicians, and we got the Brazilians to send us two uh, senior technicians, and they came and trained 12 Ghanaian technicians. So whatever opportunities we can get to train more people, absolutely. Yes. For somebody who is from the U.S., you, you like mentioning Brazil. I keep wondering, why not the U.S.? Okay. Um, all the work that I've done in Ghana here from the start entirely was funded by U.S. government uh, through National Institute of Health as a research grant. Uh, but along the way, Brazil was also starting newborn screening, and they actually asked me to help with them because we started first. So I started teaching in Brazil in 2000, and we developed a partnership with them. The, what is attractive about Brazil is that they have learned to use methods that suit a developing country. So they adapt um, the developed countries' methods and are able to make it cheaper to do. So we thought Brazil was a, a, a more important um, example for us to follow. And so we developed this very strong partnership with Brazil. Mm, we cut yes. our quotes according to... Yes, oh, yeah, we learn better ways to do something. <laughs> well, yes. thank you very much. Thank you for passing through the studio again. We say congratulations to you. Great work you're doing. God should empower you. Uh, thank you so be much. strong. Thank and you. as always, have the will and the resources to do what you do. Thank you very much All for right. the invitation. Uh, we have had in the studio Professor Emeritus Kukuo Hinefrimpon. He's the head of the Sickle Cell Foundation Ghana, but also an expert uh, in the subject, uh, teaching, lecturing, researching, and directing um, governance as well as state programs on the subjects across the world. Thank you once again. Thank We're taking a break. Much. When we come back, we'll have a lot more on the subject. But as always, you want to get interactive, please make sure you do so. Uh, join us on TV is a page's name on Facebook. And then on WhatsApp, we have the number 0560 800,000. Um, oh, well, I was calling. Uh, okay. Please, I want you to ask Prof, what causes sickle cell disease? Okay, sorry I didn't ask that because I thought we had jumped the discussion. I thought uh, the education was far reaching enough. Again, I want to I want to know more about, uh, uh, about uh, sickle cell because I'm a career and that's from Zach Dribble. So what causes sickle cell disease? Mm. Sickle sorry, cell I had disease. To bring you by, that's okay. I'm sickle cell disease is inherited. The only way to get sickle cell disease is to inherit it from your parents. You cannot be born with healthy blood and then catch sickle cell disease later on in life. It's, a, a, it's caused by a small change in our genes which we inherit from our parents. So you're born with it. Um, it's it's a, the difference between sickle cell blood and normal blood is that inside the red blood cells of people with sickle cell disease, the chemical that carries oxygen is called hemoglobin. They make a slightly different type of it compared to the regular hemoglobin. And that hemoglobin, unfortunately, can force the cell to go from being nice and round and soft to become this abnormal shape and also very stiff. Those, those cells break up very easily, and it causes the person to be anemic. Their red blood cell count is low. 
and also these cells can clog up blood circulation and cause damage to almost all tissues uh, in the body. So there are many, many complications, but they all derive from the fact that the red blood cells uh, behave differently. They're too stiff and they break up too easily. Zach, unless you're a microbiologist, I don't know how this explanation can help you, but that's what it means. <laughs> I hope you're satisfied, though. Uh, thanks again, Professor. Sure. Um, we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot more for you.